Hello again, this is Travis Schneider with RE Squared. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about RE Squared's capabilities. Uh, joining me today is a, is a very special guest and, and probably a, a very appropriate guest in Jurgen Pedersen, uh, founder, president, and CEO of RE Squared Robotics. Uh, Jurgen, thanks for joining me and uh, making some time today. It's great to be here, thanks for having me. So you're going to just jumping right in here, maybe to get a little bit uh, more background about yourself. What was it that originally brought you to Pittsburgh? Uh, I came to Pittsburgh uh, to go to school and I went to Carnegie Mellon University uh, and I drove out to Pittsburgh in 1990 and I've been in Pittsburgh ever since. Right. Uh, and so when you, when you're not in quarantine and trying to keep a uh, safe social distance, what are some of the things that you like to do in and around town? Oh, starting off with hard questions. Uh, yeah. Hard because there's Pittsburgh's just such an amazing city. You know, for me, I, I think one of the top things would be going out hiking, biking, running in the uh, city and county parks. I like being outside. Uh, I like going to restaurants and Pittsburgh has a plethora of amazing restaurants, especially like ethnic restaurants uh, and, uh, Pittsburgh also has a lot to offer there as well. I love going to the zoo. I think it's one of our hidden treasures in, in town. And uh, I like going on, uh, my wife and I went on an architecture walking tour downtown once. Uh, the architecture in Pittsburgh is amazing too. So I love enjoying that. And then since we have kids, uh, there's so much to, to do there as well. Uh, we've gone to the science center, to the children's museum, we go to climbing walls. Uh, there's, there's just so much to do. Um, go to uh, ball games. Um, you know, the list can go on and on, but it, it's an amazing place to live. Yeah, I agree. There, there, there's certainly a lot to offer within Pittsburgh, and, and hopefully not a not another hard question, but we'll, we'll see how you handle this one. Um, maybe, like, what or who inspires you in general? Um, I don't know if I have particular people um but there's there's two types of people that typically inspire me one is uh people who dare to do what has not been done before you know one one example might be you know chuck yeager right he's stepping into uh an aircraft and going supersonic and level flight for the first time right that you know that's inspiring you know to to dare what has not been done and then i think the second is uh, a group is leaders who truly care about uh, people in their charge. Um, uh, for example, uh, Lieutenant General Rick Lynch, who I know well and has written some amazing books uh, about leadership, uh, really cares about the people that were in his charge. And, uh, you know, those people are in inspirational to me. That's great. Yeah. Um, and so did, did you always aspire to become a, a CEO of a robotics company? Was this always in the cards for you or, or was that more happenstance? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just knew that I wanted to make robots and make a positive impact on the world. And becoming a CEO was simply an artifact of building a team of really talented people who shared that same vision. That's great. And maybe scrolling back the clock a bit here too. How did you originally get into engineering? What drew you into engineering? I, I think what got me into engineering was uh, rewinding all the way back to high school. Uh, up through my sophomore year of high school, I thought I was going to be an artist. And I focused on art and drawing and painting. Uh, and then in my junior year, I got exposed to science more than the, the beginning part of high school. Uh, I got exposed to chemistry and, and geology and oceanography and astronomy and meteorology and physics, which was amazing. I think I was lucky that I went to a high school that offered that variety of science, but it really piqued my interest. And in particular, physics uh, my physics class really, I think, set my path toward an engineering career where I got to build my own uh, wind tunnel. I went into the garage, found parts and started 
you know, uh, taking things apart and then putting things together to make a wind tunnel uh, for a physics class. And, and I love that, that combination of theory and hands-on experience. And that's when I knew engineering was my path. That's great. So, so what, maybe when you, once you made it into engineering school at, at Carnegie Mellon, what were some of your favorite classes or, or topics or professors that come to mind? It's a great question. I think, I think there was three classes, thinking back, that were uh, really inspirational to me. Uh, first was the uh, continuance of my love of physics, and I was fortunate to have Dr. Young uh, be my professor. Uh, and I, I still remember he was my type of person. I'd be out running on the trails of Shenley Park and he'd be out there too. So then I would just join him and we'd go for runs together. And then I'd see him in the classroom and learn about physics. Uh, and, he, and he got you excited about the subject and, and brought the applied element to it. And then in my graduate school, there were two classes that really uh, resonated with me. One was mechatronics and Gary Fetter who's still a professor uh, at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, he was the professor of the mechatronics class where you got to create a project of your choosing. And to date myself, this is back when overhead projectors were still a thing, uh, where you put the transparency on the device and it displayed it up on the wall. And I created this uh, mechanism that would automatically feed those overhead transparencies onto the overhead projector. And you can reverse or forward and uh, similar to printer technology. And it actually worked. And I thought I was going to be an entrepreneur at that point and you know, bring this into the market. And then something called PowerPoint uh, presented it presented itself. And I knew that wasn't a path. Uh, but it, But that's where I knew... I had a love of building things and getting things um, to come to life. And then related to that uh, was uh, Al Kelly was another professor who introduced me to uh, mobile robotics. I believe the course is actually called Introduction to Mobile Robotics. And that's where I knew I loved uh, not robots that just sat in a factory floor, but robots that moved through the world and could make a impact on the world by moving through it. So those are probably the three favorite classes that uh, come come to mind. That's a great answer. And that, that kind of led me into my next question for you, which was how did you get into robots specifically? So maybe if you could um, provide a little bit more insight there. Uh, so the reason for getting into robotics rewinds all the way back to my senior year of high school. There was movies coming out like Top Gun and the right stuff, and you're 18 years old, and you're looking for everything that's just really cool and awesome. And I watched the movie called The Right Stuff, and I decided, you know what? I want to be an astronaut. That looks amazing. I plot, and I figured out that the path to get to that was to go into one of the military academies. That was a, a strong path to becoming an astronaut. And I applied. It was down to me and this other person in the Philadelphia region where I grew up. And I didn't get it. So I said, well, now what am I going to do? So being 18 years old, uh, robotics started becoming more prevalent. And uh, you know, frankly, it was just cool sounding. <laughs> so I said, yeah. you know what? I'm going to do robotics. And then I got into several schools. I got into Clarkson and Drexel and Carnegie Mellon. Um, but the fact that Carnegie Mellon focused on robotics uh, was the reason why I ended up going there, and that kind of set my path into robotics. Yeah. So, and, and so, what about robotics gets you excited? So, although I started in robotics because I thought they were just cool <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, back then, what what gets me excited now is that I know that ro robots can be used to actually save lives or improve quality of life, and really, that's what drives me and excites me. And is what uh, is the vision for RE squared? That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for for sharing that background. So, so maybe helping to to bridge the divide between your academic career and and how you got into to industry in general. So, what can you maybe describe for us a little bit of what led you to start your own robotics company? So, after graduating 
from Carnegie Mellon, I decided to work for Carnegie Mellon. And at that time, they were founding the National Robotics Engineering Consortium. Uh, it was called the Consortium at that time. It's been since renamed to Center. And I was one of the original 12 people at the NREC. And I spent five years there helping to uh, hopefully commercialize robotics and enter it into the market. But uh, I hadn't achieved that goal in those five years. So I left the NREC and joined another startup company uh, focused on robotics and they were doing floor cleaning robots as well as looking at making robots that would interact with people in a retail environment. Uh, that didn't uh, go in the direction that I anticipated. Uh, so, but I knew that I didn't want to necessarily go back to working at the university. So a year later, I formed RE Squared simply uh, to be a consulting company. So it was just me and I was going to um, serve the NREC and anyone else who needed help with robotics. And that's what started the company uh, back in that uh, 2001 timeframe. But uh, since then, it's uh, definitely evolved. And uh, now uh, we have uh, a strong staff of robotics engineers and we're in multiple markets. And it's a much different company than uh, when I started it. Uh, almost 20 years ago. Since 2001, RE Squared Robotics has remained committed to our mission to develop innovative technologies that make a positive impact on the world. RE Squared is a leader in the design, development, and manufacture of human-like robotic technology, solving the most challenging applications in the world. If you would like to be contacted about a robotics application, please email us at myrobots at resquared.com. That's M-Y-R-O-B-O-T-S at resquared.com. To stay up to date with the latest RE Squared news, visit our website at www.resquared.com or you can always follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like to see more videos like this or videos featuring actual RE Squared robots, please subscribe to this channel on YouTube.